Bonjour à tous, j'espère que vous allez tous bien, ici Tesla Phil. Aujourd'hui on va parler, euh, bah pas de Tesla, mais d'un de ses concurrents, un tout nouveau concurrent euh, qui s'appelle Lightyear. Donc Lightyear euh, en français, hein, ça veut dire euh, vitesse de la lumière, enfin euh, une allée-lumière. Et euh, donc c'est un nouveau constructeur, mais qui est très particulier, parce qu'ils n'ont pas encore de voiture actuellement sur le marché. Et euh, ils font la présentation ce soir, donc comme vous le voyez là à l'écran, à 20h de, de leur Lightyear One. Donc Lightyear One, c'est une voiture qui fait plus de 5 mètres de long avec des panneaux solaires sur le toit et ils annoncent une autonomie record de, je ne sais plus, c'est 700 ou 800 km parce que ben, les, les panneaux solaires rechargent une partie de la batterie et surtout parce que la voiture est très très efficiente. Donc on, on attend là 20h dans une minute pour voir euh, bah, qu'est-ce qu'ils vont nous présenter et puis euh, bah, je commenterai au fur et à mesure euh, ce qui sera présenté et puis euh, bah, je, on pourra en échanger à la fin voilà donc on va attendre patiemment là encore euh, ça, enfin, on a le compte à rebours là qui s'affiche je vais mettre la petite musique euh, de fond donc, comme ça on entendra également ce qui se dit vous voyez qu'il y a euh, bah, 1500 personnes hein, qui sont connectées euh, et moi je les ai connus en fait euh, ben, simplement par euh, la presse hein, euh, le... ils, ils ont contacté en fait euh, ils, ont, ils ont fait pas mal d'articles dans, dans la presse et euh, moi je me suis inscrit pour, pour avoir les nouvelles de, de la voiture sachant que rechercher en fait des investisseurs parce que la voiture si je ne me trompe pas elle est dans les 150 000 à 200 000 euros donc forcément c'est pas tous les budgets qui, qui pourront se l'acheter et euh, ce qui va être très intéressant, c'est le futur en fait, c'est euh, euh, le moment où ils vont euh, faire un petit peu comme avec Tesla, euh, au démarrage ils avaient sorti le Model S, et puis ensuite euh, la Model 3 est sortie et euh, c'est démocratisé. Et donc là en fait c'est ce qu'ils promettent euh, après avoir échangé avec euh, quelques personnes. Euh, de chez eux ils m'ont même appelé. Voilà. Je n'ai pas parlé, puis on va écouter... Euh... Welcome. It's great to have you all here. And we're super excited about today because ever since we started racing our solar cars in Australia through the Outback and winning the World Solar Challenge, we've been dreaming about unveiling the production intent version of the world's first solar car, what we're going to do today. And at Lightyear, we're quite obsessed with climate change. It's a problem that has been getting bigger and bigger ever since we were little kids. And as engineers, we've been looking at how can we contribute? How can we move the needle and improve the problem? How can we move the needle and improve the problem? And we all know that combustion cars are part of the problem and electric cars are a step in the right direction. But electric cars add a lot of complexity to our daily lives, but also to the infrastructure. And only half a percent of all the cars worldwide today are electric. So we have to accelerate, we have to be quicker. We have to make the large jump. The yearly global CO2 production actually went up 20% since we were little kids. And global temperatures have risen. The North and the South Pole both saw record temperatures this year. The clock is ticking, and we believe that there is a simpler way to accelerate. Because we all need to drive sustainable cars by 2040, 100% sustainable. And We can make this simpler for both governments, as well as users, as well as for the infrastructure. So what is the problem? The first one are charging points. They need to be installed about four times quicker than is currently the case, and that's in Europe. And installing charging infrastructure is quite hard. It requires collaboration between governments, users, institutions, grid operators. And the second one is electric cars. The electric cars that people can buy nowadays are compared to the combustion cars they buy for the same price are quite complex to use. They have a small range, you have to charge them often, they require planning, quite a lot of planning. So basically we're asking people to drive a car that is less convenient than the combustion car they're using today. So looking at the climate change and the way we live our lives, the question becomes, how do we preserve what we have and still Live the life we love. Donc là, il commence euh, en son introduction, donnant le contexte hein, de pourquoi est-ce qu'il faut euh, acheter une voiture électrique. Et euh, il y a des points euh, 
compliqué. Hein. Donc, euh, le premier point euh, qu'il a cité, c'est euh, euh, la recharge. Il n'y a pas forcément des points de recharge partout. Et le deuxième, c'est au niveau de l'autonomie, parce que euh, bah, les autonomies euh, des voitures électriques sont euh, plus faibles qu'une voiture thermique. Voilà, ça c'est ce qu'il a dit grosso modo. A belief that we can create a balance between nature and mankind. And in doing so, together, we are facing a bright horizon. A way of living that does not obstruct, but enables. That does not conflict, but promotes. Every day the sun rises, we get a new chance, new opportunities, new ways of thinking. It is a force of nature that is taking us on a winding journey in a rough landscape. Where we are going is where we need to be. Back in 2013, we showed that it was possible. We raced in the outback 3,000 kilometers in the World Solar Challenge, a competition with 45 of the top universities around the world. Ils ont participé à une compétition en Australie où ils ont pu faire 1300 km avec une voiture a priori électrique spécifique. J'ai bien compris. So, solar cars are not right. just about sustainability, they're actually about convenience, it's about more range, it's about less charging. And we'd expect the industry to see the brilliance of this and to start building solar cars as well. But up until this day, they find it hard to really embrace the concept. And that's why for us, it felt like an obligation. We'll have to do this. And we'll have to get to, to those millions of solar cars and make it our lives work. And today is the first big step. We founded Lightyear in 2016. It took us about three years to get to the first prototype, the Lightyear One concept. And right about the time of the unveiling of the Lightyear One concept, we had realized that we had pushed the boundaries of existing technology and that we had to develop our own. Because to get to the targets we had set for ourselves to build a proper solar car, not just a car with solar panels on the roof, we had to develop our own technology. And on top of the technology, we had to get to production. And building cars in production is a lot more complex than building just a prototype. So in the last three years, we had to grow the company from about 100 people to 500 people. We onboarded more than 100 suppliers. We wrote 57 patents. But above all, we redesigned more than 1,000 components to actually be safe, comfortable, reliable, and get to the efficiencies we want to get to. So to get to production is thinking beyond the car. It's thinking about the team and the company. And honestly, it was quite an uphill battle to get to the point where we are today. One of the milestones we are most proud of is driving the validation prototype 710 kilometers, that's about 440 miles, on a single 60 kilowatt hour battery charge. That's longer than any electric car has ever driven on 60 kilowatt hours. But we're even more excited about the fact that, thanks to a large and alive effort from people at Lightyear, but also the, all of our suppliers, in the last 18 months, we've designed a production car around that technology to bring this extraordinary performance to production for you to drive. So why do we believe solar cars are a smarter solution? So let's look at it from both sides. Let's first start with the elephant in the room, and that's charging infrastructure. Because every electric car is dependent on it. But in the end, it's, it's a means to an end. It's to get electricity into your car. And every electric car is dependent on these chargers, and the chargers in turn are dependent on the grid. And the grid then is dependent on still mostly fossil fueled energy because there are not enough renewables today. Ideally, you don't want to be dependent on anything because dependencies in the end slow things down and we want to accelerate. And electric cars are dependent on chargers and we want to make things simpler because charging infrastructure today is an uncertainty whether you will always have that charge. 
but it will remain an uncertainty in the coming 10 years in the whole uptake of charging infrastructure, whether you're still going to have that charge. So adding a new source, the sun, adds certainty that you'll always have that charge and you'll have to charge a lot less often and therefore make things simpler. And then on the other side, electric cars are still using that fossil fueled energy. And it means we need more clean energy generation in the grid itself. And a great thing about adding that solar panel directly to the car is that you don't have to add that generation anymore to the grid itself. And it's a shortcut that we as humanity can use to, to speed up the adoption of emission-free mobility. And who doesn't like to use a shortcut for the better? Now that's the idea. So how do we get it into large scale production? And our strategy is twofold. And we start with the base and that's phase zero. So phase zero is all about paving the way. It's the preparation phase. It's showing that our cars and our technology can really drive everywhere. And we'll build a first low volume vehicle that we'll present later in this presentation. Phase zero is not just about getting the concept and the technology ready, it's also about getting the first cars to customers. It's about building those processes and the team that I talked about earlier. And that's a very important foundation for the phase after this. But it's not just about getting the company ready, we're also extremely excited to show what the concept itself is capable of. Because who would have thought that you would be able to drive a proper solar car in 2022? And the moments that a new product comes to market in the automotive industry especially are very rare. And this one has the potential to change the whole way we look at scaling electric cars. And that's what phase zero is about, is being that seed that changes everything and showing customers worldwide that there's going to be a great electric car for them as well. And we'll be the first ones to deliver an electric car that can drive everywhere on the planet. And it's showing that even with just normal household plugs and outlets uh, and the sun combined, you can drive 500 kilometers per day. So that's about 300 miles per day. The next phase is phase one. And phase one is all about getting to large scale production. And it's building cars that are more affordable, but have the same advantages as its low volume predecessor that we're getting to market this year. But let's be honest, phase zero will not have a lot of impact still. It's about preparing for the next phase of acceleration. But let's start with phase zero. Welcome and join us on our journey to positive impact. We will go from few to many from dreamers to change makers, from pioneering to perseverance. Because we believe, eventually, it's upon us as humanity to enable that change and live up to it. Meet the origin of Lightyear. Meet Lightyear Zero. Voilà Lightyear Zero. Elle a des panneaux solaires partout sur la, sur la carrosserie. On voit le, le capot sur le toit à l'arrière. Je crois qu'au total il y a 5 mètres carrés hein, je vu dans la presse. 5 mètres carrés euh, de panneaux solaires. Intéressant. Ça permet de recharger euh, la voiture euh, en roulant et même quand elle est à l'arrêt. Hein, Tout à l'heure euh, le, le, le président, euh, enfin le président de Lightyear a a parlé de pouvoir faire 500 km tous les jours en chargeant donc à la maison avec une prise classique. Elle va être lancée d'abord au Pays-Bas. Elle est autorisée à rouler au Pays-Bas. One of the co-founders of Lightyear, Koeven Ham, to the stage. 
Koen is chief design, and he will tell more about the design and the car as well. Ils vont parler du design. Enjoy. Thank you, Lex. Lightyear Zero is record holder in many categories. It is not only the most energy efficient electric Vous vehicle on the market. It also has five square meters of highly efficient solar cells integrated in the roof and in Quand the roof. What that means is that you can drive further on the same amount of energy. In fact, our solar cells can add up to 70 kilometers of driving range Donc avec per le day, soleil, on arrive à recharger 70 km so most people d'autonomie could drive for months during the Par summer jour. between chargers. In the Netherlands, you could drive up to two months without charging. And in Portugal, you could drive up to seven months before you have on to charge rouler, from your plug deux mois de l'été sans charger. That is based on an average daily commute of 35 kilometers. Donc, basé sur so in the Netherlands, you have a driving range of over 2,100 kilometers, and in Portugal, it's three times that, 7,400 kilometers. Donc, entre deux charges, on to peut get faire to these numbers, kilometers, we uh, had to rethink the architecture of the electric car. And when we did that, it turned out that we had to develop our own core technologies as well. We've put motors in each of the four wheels, okay, giving us the lowest energy losses of any electric car powertrain ever built. We focused on highway range because that's what matters the most. We are excited to share that we achieved 560 kilometers sur le at a highway speed of 110 km per hour without the sun. It is also the most aerodynamic family car today. La voiture la plus aérodynamique. On voit vraiment la, la, la partie arrière de la voiture. Heating and cooling also play a key role in energy use. So for Lightyear Zero, we designed an optimized thermal system that intelligently matches energy use with environmental conditions. Next, the mass of the car impacts its energy efficiency. Lightyear Zero is an electric vehicle over 5 meters long, but it only has a weight of 1575 kg. by combining functions into fewer components. Donc ce qui est intéressant par rapport à Model 3 et puis une tonne 8 à la Model 3. The body is made out of reclaimed recycled carbon fiber. So it's lightweight and it has a low carbon fiber. de carbone. At Lightyear, we believe that our drive for technological efficiency helps us to achieve a beautiful, minimal design aesthetic that is sustainable without compromise. Nowhere is that proved more than in the inside of the Lightyear Zero. Donc on voit à l'intérieur, il y a un grand écran pour le modèle 3. Our in-wheel allowed us to push essential electronics out of the cabin forward. So we could rethink the interior space. Donc l'intérieur a été repensé parce que ben, les moteurs sont disposés uniquement dans les roues. With plenty of storage. We select the vehicle materials pour ranger les, les, les with plant-based leather for the steering wheel. L'intérieur est vraiment sympa. Made out of recycled plastics. Avec des plastiques recyclés. With all the focus on what's on clair. top of the car. It was still most important for us to create an interior that is bright, comfortable and effortless to use. We are really excited to share this final version with the world. Back to you, Lex. Thanks a lot, Kuhn. So in the end, cars are all about freedom. And people buy a car because of the freedom it provides. So on we hope that we can bring back that, that, joy, future, that joy of driving and remove that guilt and some of the constraints that other cars put on your life. And we're pushing for efficiency, not just because it's more sustainable. We're pushing for efficiency because it provides more convenience and provides more range. So you get a car that fits much better into your daily life. So I can imagine you're left with the burning question of when. When are we going to see these cars on the road? Well, the first test drives are going to happen in July and August. And then we're going to production in the fall. But the first delivery... Donc les premiers tests, c'est en juillet, août. Et ensuite la production euh, à partir de septembre. Like to thank you all for attending this unveiling. This is a year full of milestones we're very much looking forward to. 
and the journey so far has been incredibly exciting, but one also filled with ups and downs, setbacks and celebrations. Je vous explique aussi que pas forcément simple, il y a eu des hauts et des bas dans la production de cette voiture. This month. I would like to invite you all to join the cause and not only just by going to our website and follow us on social media, it could also be to invest in the company. Je nous invite à à faire plus que les, les suivre hein, sur les réseaux sociaux, mais euh, d'investir aussi dans leur entreprise. Voilà, donc là, je pense que la, la présentation prend fin. Voilà, donc euh, on vient de voir euh, cette présentation. Donc euh, c'est une voiture qui est encore aujourd'hui euh, hors de portée euh, pour, la, pour le commun des mortels, on va dire ça comme ça. Euh, on sait dans tous les cas que euh, ça devrait, si jamais euh, elle rencontre le succès euh, escompté. On va elle va pouvoir euh, mener à, à d'autres véhicules euh, plus accessibles. Et, euh, et ça, c'est vraiment intéressant. Donc là, on voit des images hein, de la voiture. Euh, je vais voir si je peux améliorer la qualité. Hop. Voilà, donc euh, euh, voiture très intéressante. On n'a pas encore beaucoup d'informations hein, sur euh, euh, la suite. On en saura certainement plus euh, à la rentrée, puisque les premiers modèles livrés seront euh, livrés à la rentrée. Et puis ensuite, on... avec de la chance, peut-être qu'on en verra plus. Euh, donc euh, bah, dites moi en commentaire hein, déjà si vous connaissiez euh, Lightyear, cette marque et puis euh, bah, si vous voulez en savoir plus euh, moi si vous voulez je peux vous mettre en contact avec euh, la personne qui m'avait appelé euh, donc euh, c'est une entreprise euh, néerlandaise hein, et il m'avait appelé directement sur mon téléphone hein, en pensant que j'allais investir euh, des millions d'euros euh, dans leur entreprise mais on sait pas le cas malheureusement, mais euh, je pense qu'il y a quand même un bel avenir et c'est euh, probablement une tendance hein, qu'on va avoir d'avoir de, de, des voitures avec des panneaux solaires, euh, ne serait-ce que pour faire fonctionner le, le chauffage par exemple de la voiture, ça peut toujours être intéressant. Euh, si on arrive à, à maintenir euh, les prix euh, allez quoi, dans, dans, aux alentours du prix d'une modèle 3 par exemple. Voilà. Donc, euh, ben, dites-moi ce que vous en avez pensé et puis euh, n'hésitez pas à mettre un pouce en l'air hein, si euh, ça vous a plu. Euh, moi, je vous dis euh, à très bientôt dans une autre vidéo. Au revoir.